through language, you are able to quite compellingly lead someone to an end goal or some sort of desired action. And, and essentially, that's what behavioral linguists do. They use various parts of language. They crucially know that every word counts uh, when it comes to a communication, whether that's a spoken communication, whether it's a written one. Um, every word matters, basically. Um, and so the sort of the holistic explanation of it is that you are nudging action by creating compelling content um, with really this core belief that you're able to, to create some sort of behavioral change as a result. And I always like to actually put the word responsible action um, in that description, and, and we'll, we'll chat about that a bit later as to why. Um, so it's, it's fairly overwhelming how many decisions uh, we all make every single day. Um, recent research has shown between 30 and 40,000 decisions in one single day. From the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed, you are bombarded with communication and messages, whether that's above the line billboards on your drive to work, uh, switching on the radio and listening to sort of a presenter on the radio or, a, or some sort of radio ad. Um, certainly getting into the office environment and then starting to think about addressing your email inbox. Um, on every single given day, there are one billion emails that are sent. And I'm sure I speak for most of us when, when I say, you feel like all those emails are coming to you. So, so to try and break through that noise is obviously a very crucial thing for anyone who's in this game of um, communication. And the reason why behavioral linguistics actually is so fascinating to me is that it transcends your personal, your professional life. It's certainly a strong tool that once you start to master the art of it, um, and, and we'll talk about the manipulation elements a little bit later, uh, you really do start to see some, some quite remarkable step changes in, in your own life, in your professional life. And it's certainly a framework that can be applied across any industry. So back to these decisions. You, you're not going to be able to read all of those things in that circle. But um, these are the documented, researched behavioral science principles, or what are called um, cognitive biases, or mental shortcuts that as, as humans, um, and in fact, it's, it's fascinating because it, it's, it's across language barriers, it's across cultures, we do a range of those things in order to cope with the volume of information that we're presented with every single day. And based on, on that circle is how we form, how we, how we make our decisions. So I've summarized just the number there. There's a, 189 of them. And um, certainly, I'm trying to sort of make my way through that entire circle as part of the PhD research that I'm looking at. Uh, but behavioral linguistics tries to almost start with that to say, look, we know that people battle to make decisions. We know that people make irrational decisions. That's a sort of central tenet to behavioral economic theory. So how do we apply language in such a way that we're appealing to one of those in that circle to really make our message far more compelling? So this is how we start by doing it. It's a, a very easy summarized approach. It's called the three C's. And the three C's are content, contact, and context. And what's so crucial here is that you're thinking about your language and the words you're using and how you're going to frame that message. But at the same time, you're thinking about you know, who, who's receiving the message from a target audience point of view. And of course, the more you know about that target audience, the more personalized you can be, which in itself is very nudgy. And, and I'll get back to this word nudgy. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll probably mention it a few times today. Um, and then the final one, which contributes to the sort of interplay of behavioral linguistics, is context. Time in your message and how you're delivering it. And um, this is probably my favorite example of the three C's coming together in a very special way. Um, I spent some time in New York earlier this year and during summer. And if any of you have been on a subway, whether it's New York or any of the other major cities, uh, when it's hot, you experience exactly this. And I was standing in front of this and too much information, definitely perspiring, read this message and it just really grabbed me that the content was so compelling. I was the perfect contact and the context of it being during summer, um, obviously during you know, a time when it's super warm. And then obviously this was a, a message to say, well, rather sweat at one of, I think it's Fiji, one of these amazing destinations that Hotels.com can convince you to, to visit. 